Here we are, another Wednesday night extravaganza at quickfixgolf.com. And we have a great topic for tonight, which is the new limited flight golf balls that the USGA is about to bestow the on The equalizer. Us. Yes, unbelievable. And this is a free online class. Going on, somebody's making noise in the background. And then. I'm Darren Amelie. And I'm Bobby Lopez. And, and we're, we're the, the PGA, PGA pros, pros at Tupelo Bay. Bay. Yes, that's right. <laughs> See, it's easier when we're here at the same it's, time. We're, we're in sync. Now here, what we want you to do is go to our website at quickfixgolf.com and upload your video it's, if you've never done it before. It's free of charge, and, and I'm surprised more people don't do this. We're going to give you some great information about your golf swing, tailor it to you, give you some drills uh, so you can get better, because that's what we do here. We want you to get better at golf, so send it to quick service at uh, quickfixgolf.com. And we'll uh, we'll do it free of charge. Or upload it on the website. Now we've got you can the do upload that too. there and it'll be can, one that's thing. That's right. It, it'll come back looking sort of like this that you see right here on the screen. And uh, we're also going to begin doing these classes in other time zones. We wanted to start by this week. It'll probably be another week. And uh, we're, we're we've universal. got students in these areas we're, we're already. Wide. We've got students in these areas and, and already. And if there were people on the moon, we'd probably add the moon to this um, this list. So how do you know there's not people on the that moon? You could be right. If there was the, a fence, there'd the, be Mexicans. The, the, <laughs> who knows what's going on on the dark side of that moon? So, um. We're looking at this uh, first uh, article before we get into the program that we're going to talk about tonight. The USGA is talking about limiting the length of the driver again. They lowered it to 48 inches. Remember before the old killer bees? They were like 51, 52, 53 inches. Yep. So they cut that back to 48 inches. Now they're talking about cutting back to 46 and a half inches. Well, you know, when I was working for Nicholas, Jack experimented with a 40-inch driver. He did. He, he played it for about a month. He played it on in, in one senior tour event. Uh, I specifically remember it. And, um, and it does help add a little bit of club head speed. I think the numbers are roughly around um, 0.75 um, yards or miles per hour per per inch. So if you have one inch, you're adding just about a mile per hour, somewhere in that area. It's, it's kind of some of the statistics. With that My wife said another inch would yeah, add yeah, more than a mile yeah, an hour. Right. <laughs> She'll take every quarter of an inch she can get. But something along those lines. So, so, so you can it's go about a mile an hour per inch. Some, this this like article that. right here is in Golf Digest. And uh, you can read up on that. Here we have another article on the maximum distance the USGA and RNA allow a legal golf ball to travel. They're talking about uh, controlling the golf ball to go shorter, and that's why we're doing this webinar tonight. About right, and this is it's a hot topic for sure, and, and it's specifically with me, when people come up for a golf lesson, right, they, they come up for one of three, three reasons typically. They come up because they slice, right? right? They come up because they're inconsistent, right? And they come up because they don't hit it far enough. And what's the USGA trying to do to people like you and I? Now they're starting to shorten it. They're trying to shorten it, which it, it only uh, um, relates to that one percent of the population. That's the people we see on TV, and it shouldn't be. So I'm a little hot on this topic, and 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 I don't kind of like what's going on here because people. I need to enjoy the game, and nobody wants to hit. Why? Why would you go to a baseball game? Why, tell me why you want to go to a baseball. You game. want to see some home runs. You want to see home runs. You don't want to see bunt singles. I mean, seriously, come on. Well, you I want like, to see home runs. I like the, 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 the being seriously about baseball because I love baseball. I love seeing good defense, but I love a but, pitcher's duel. But, but don't get me wrong, like but I don't love seeing bunts. But you, you still like to see that ball going out of the stadium. You got that right. It's always exciting. And that's, to me, what the USGA is trying to do here. They're trying to give you bunts. Now, I get some of the reasons behind it. I get it. They want to shorten. The, uh, they don't want to keep lengthening golf courses, and there's a big expense there. They want to keep the, the greens fees low, but I'm telling you what, they're go I, I think they're going down the wrong road, and here's why. Because it's it comes down to one person. It comes down to the El Presidente, Mikey D., the man who's in charge of the USGA 
and and I think it's his ego that's causing this problem. He wants to see the ball rolled back before he leaves. And it's all about his ego, and I think it's completely wrong. I do. Well, especially wrong, and we're going to show because we're going to look at some graphs here tonight and stuff, that uh, for the average golfer, somebody who's a 20 handicap or something, it's death to them. They don't Absolutely. have to go any shorter. Nope. nope. In fact, you know, there was a story about Arnold Palmer. What, what's going on here? Uh, slideshow from current slide. Maybe that's the last slide. Yeah, the, um, Stacey Lewis, there she is. Um, the Arnold Palmer was the, the left pole at her in Richmond when they used to play the Chris Star Classic. That was one of the last senior tour tournaments that Arnold Palmer won. And he and he hit the ball up on the on the eleventh hole with a four iron, 195 yards, and the ball would land twice and then back up. So as he walked up to the green, an old man says, "Hey, Arnie, how do you make that ball go 195 yards like that with your four iron and make it back up?" He says, "How far do you hit your four iron?" He said, "Oh, about 140." So why do you want it to back up? Yep. <laughs> no. Ah, he supposed to laugh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, now let's take a <laughs> let's take a look. At the, uh, well, we had this conversation today in, a, in our workshops, and um, you know, the average person is 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 hitting it short of their target. And and when we had Lou Stagner on, um, what was it, two or three weeks ago? It, it it's it's about distance. It's about most people hit it short of where they're trying to go. So why are we trying to 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 limit the golf ball? It's matter. all about that that elite player and that, that 1%, and I just don't get where they're going with all this. So Here's the, um, the thing that you sent me. Yeah, let's pull up that report from the USGA. And this is online. You can go to the USGA website. This is the what they call the, um, the Distance Insights Report. And uh, well, I had a different name for it at the workshop. Today, the, USGA uh, org, and then you'll find it there. I called it the uh, the dip uh, bleep report, and um, you can you can view it on there. And it's 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 a lot of information, but I think some of it's biased information. And it's you know, very just, current, February fourth, twenty twenty. Oh, it, it I mean, came out. Today. We were watching the the State of the Union. It it came out. We were watching that as opposed to watching what was going on in golf. Now a lot of people think the PGA runs the, runs. Two different two different entities. It's so the USGA and the RNA. And and this yes, this was in in coordination with the RNA. It wasn't just the USGA, but the PGA is a completely different entity. So try not to get those two things involved, but uh, confused. But we, I've got a list here of of kind of the the highlights. All right. Okay. And and what the USGA and the RNA are saying here is that hitting distance has increased and it's going to increase in the future. Right. That's what they're saying. And I don't I don't necessarily think that's right. Maybe compared to the 1930s. But in the last 20 years, you know, there's a lot of charts in here and it's all about the elite player. Well, you know, one thing is, is of course, just take devil's advocate is real estate. I mean, if you make these clubs golf courses longer and longer and longer because they're hitting the ball further, further, further. It's more grass to have to fertilize. It's you know, but for the average golfer, do they need more real estate? You know, when I was working at the Country Club of Fairfield, great, great classic golf course built in the nineteen nineteen eighteen. I want to say the length of the golf course right now is sixty two hundred yards. That's the length of the golf course, and you can have an enjoyable round even at at my level of the game at sixty two hundred yards. Why, why do we have to put a put a a, a value on on par? What 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 does it what does it matter? It's it's a number. Who cares about par? Right? It, it is what you shoot. It's par seventy five, par sixty five. What does it matter? Well, here's a chart right here, and it shows elite women and elite men. Now, where do you find those? That's a good. That <laughs> that's my point. This whole distance report thing is about the elite golfer. And you're talking around the 1900s. They're saying that 75 to 100 yards is. They didn't say what club they're hitting. Well, no, I they're using the their driver. driver. Yep. So long drives, 200 to 220, in the 1900s. Then it says the 1930s, 270 to 290. I'm gonna tell you right now, from my own experience. See, I started playing golf in what 1960. It's 59. I was nine years old. 
Nobody in the 1970s, well, I'm not saying nobody, four guys could hit a 290. George Bear, Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas, and maybe one more. That was it. So, so, so that brings up a good point about this report. You know, there's so many different things to measure information nowadays. They didn't have it back then, right? So, they're guessing. You know, the knowledge that we have nowadays. Um, we'll go back the other yep, way. Go, go back to that chart. Sorry. The knowledge that we have nowadays is way different than the knowledge we had back in the 1900s and the 1930s, and the, the knowledge we have is way different. And if you look at this report, if you go online and look at it and read it, you'll see how it, it, it explains how they accumulated the information. There's a yeah, we we just there's 120 pages. So like I said, there were numerous reports of long drives in the range of 200 to 220. Well, who who reported that? Nancy and, Pelosi. And, and <laughs> <laughs> I mean, give me a break. You wait, know. wait, wait a minute. What did you what? <laughs> He just ripped up the whole script for tonight. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. But but let's talk a little bit about some of these different numbers. Why why has the numbers changed over the years? You know, to me it comes down to a couple different things. It's one is going to be the equipment, and you can say the ball and the driver are one and the same. Your ball's your equipment according to the rules of golf. Your ball and the driver are equipment. Two would be the golfer themselves, and when we had Lou on, you know, two weeks ago, he talked about uh, course management strategies and things along those lines. The golfers nowadays are definitely a little bit more athletic. They're they're a little more no, concerned with. They're, they're a hell of a lot more athletic. Hell of a lot more. Athletic. I would I would say just you know from from knowing and growing up and playing. I mean, come on. I mean, you look at some of these kids today. They're conditioned. They're doing exercises. They're doing all kinds of workouts. We didn't work out back in the 70s. Nicholas didn't work out back what, in the 70s. Well, what did you do back then? Drink beer. <laughs> <laughs> Party and have a good time. I mean, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't think of it as an athletic endeavor. It was, it was, it was golf. I mean, it, it, these kids today, like Dustin Johnson or whatever, he's six four and he knocks the snot out of it. It's it's kind of the Michael Phelps analogy that I like to use, where you know, Michael Phelps is 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 his body, not many people are are like him. They they can't get into the the, the positions that he gets into and the, the length of his arms and um yeah, I think that the today's athlete is way different than back in the day. And then the last thing would be the golf course. The agronomy nowadays is way different. The mowers are sharper, they're cutting it at lower heights. So they're getting more roll off the ball. They're getting more roll off the ball. So I think it's a combination of a couple things, but the bottom line where, where this really gets me is that this whole report is about rolling back the golf ball, and I think it's it's going down the wrong road. I think, number one, I don't know who who did this report. I guess the USGA, yeah, but, did, but did they hire somebody? And, that, and I don't know that. We, we, it's, this just came out, so there's 120 pages today, that so you, you can, you can we've look still got to go through. So you're going to have to pass this before you can find out what's <laughs> <Sure>. in it. <laughs> Hold you on. gonna get any PGA points for that? Yeah, I don't Maybe? know about that. Let me see here. Measure of distance. Uh, let's look at some of these other pages. We've got some charts here. Here's here's the chart right here. Look at it. Distance inside report. Let me make it a little bigger. And it shows here. And here's one thing that's interesting. You see this color here, this sort of brownish color? That's the corn fairy tour. So, so for those of you who don't know what the corn fairy tour is, it's <laughs> That's the craziest name, the corn fairy tour. It's, it's a, a tour. Do you put your tooth in the Iowa? Pool? Right. It's a tour they have in Iowa that uh, Ray um, Kinsella. The corn fairy yep, tour. And, and you play on his, his corn farm. And if you build it, they will come. But they're hitting the ball further than the PGA tour. You look at the PGA tour, which is in, in red, and the European tour is in blue. They're about neck and neck. And here's here's why well, the Japan golf tour they're shorter <laughs> must be because of the sushi. <laughs> but that that corn fairy tour is, is a developmental tour for <laughs> seriously corn fairy tour. for the PGA. And, and here's why they're hitting it farther because there's a little yeah there's a limited amount of spots and the idea is to get to the PGA tour. So today's kind of thought process is. You got to hit bombs and you got to attack flags. 
And that's what it's about on that Corn Ferry Tour because they want to get to the PGA Tour. And they know they need low scores. So they cannot be conservative. And that's why that number, I think, is a little bigger. Now, you look at this. What's what's L-E-T? I don't know what that is, but L-P-G-A. It's a, it's a tennis term is what it is, let. It's a I don't know what term. the heck it is, but uh, uh, we'll have to read the report to find out. This just came out today, fans. So hold on a second here. Let's see. Now, this... And... and um... We oh, try to oh, stay oh, up. This, this is this is good. Hold on, hold on. Let me let me make this bigger. Oh, I made it too big. Here is when the drought. Here's the hollow metal woods, oversized drivers, titanium drivers, beginning and the wound golf balls. When it, when it switched golf balls, and it shows how the difference, the distances differed. As you get older, these these years right here from 2003 on is when the, really the distances improve. And again, the Corn Ferry Tour is still number one. So one of the things that it, when it comes to distances, what the, they're not showing here, which once again it's a biased report, is off-center hits, right? Are they how are they measuring who's hitting it in the well, center of the face? No, from the little bit that I read, they're measuring off golf tournaments now. You know, in the past, they're they're really. Oh, there he is. Ladies European T Tour. T Timoteo. Timoteo. Tomato. T uh, can, can you have a microphone, Timoteo? Can I ask and a that question? ladies European Tour is um. <coughs> we knew. Not working. Uh, is, is, okay. Uh too bad. All right, sorry. We'd love to have you chime in. But, but as I was saying. You know, when you miss the center of the face with today's equipment and today's golf ball, it goes farther. And back in the day, when you were playing, if you missed the center of the face, that ball would would, would go, what, 40% less than it would I, nowadays. I never, I never missed the center yeah, well. of the face. <laughs> <laughs> the club head was so small. Anywhere you hit it was right. the center of the face. Right. What a difference. I mean, you look at some of these old pictures. Of guys with the, I remember the old Hogan Woods, and they were so small. It was the four wood, the five wood were just tiny, but we didn't know any different. That's what we 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 use. Okay, so let's go to the next chart. Distance Insights report. I don't know what the hell that is. LPGA season average. LPGA. Who cares? Now I'm gonna I'm gonna get the same thing Hank Haney got. See, just for saying that. Let's see, all tour average. That's right. Yeah, Keep there your you mouth go. shut. There you go. I don't know what this is. This is incest reports. You know, we're, we're practically looking at this almost the same time you are. We want to be Let's first. Let's go down to maybe page 17. Look, look at this. Here's, here's a good page. Here's a good page. Average iron distance. So they're showing here with a with three iron. Who the hell even has a three iron anymore? So let's go to the four iron. That the pros, the touring pros are hitting at 215 about. And that the women's are hitting at 186. But again, this is two in pros. What about the regular schmo that plays golf? I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you, but I, I hate to look at it in terms of men and women. I, I just I don't see it that way. And as we talked about it today, to me, it's all about club head speed. It's, it's not whether you're male or female or um, from Venezuela or you're Democrat or Republican. It's about how fast you're swinging. It. So that that to me is the important thing: how fast you're swinging it, and that's what these numbers really should signify what how is fast are you in yards what is this i don't know i don't know either uh, this is for long drivers go to page 17 where are we at page here? 17 there we are yeah, page 17 this is a good chart here all right go ahead so this is you know basically oh, yeah, from, by handicap by handicap and, and and driving distance and you can see from 1996 to today it's not a huge increase in distance so here's the handicaps here less than six six and less Six to 12, 13 to 20, 21 plus, and then all. And what we should be really looking at is that 21. Are you, are you in that all department? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> oh. uh, Go ahead. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Go ahead. But we really should be looking at, at more of kind of that average golfer. Here, you know, the, here's the six the, and below. Look at it. He's hitting a 250. And they've actually lost some distance. So we should be looking at the, the golfer that swings, let's say, 85 to 90 miles an hour, right? It, it, it's 
that's the person that we should be looking at as opposed to some of these charts i don't i don't know i i haven't once again haven't looked at this in depth yet so i could be completely wrong and they could have some other information here that i'm missing but you yeah, know you this see, is kind of we're, we're so where we're, we're at we're, we're so interested in being first to get it to you because it That's came right. out today that we could be wrong but but we're going to read it in more depth and get back to you guys and everything Look at this right here drivers hit by handicap there category all right let's go to page about 19. let's go to page, page 19. 19 one more here we go okay there you go no page one more one more keep That's going. 19 there right there scroll down to factors which impact hitting distances there there we you go. go as i was saying earlier these these are kind of the three big things that we really need to look at and i think it's, it's a little bit of everything it's a little bit of the equipment it's a little bit of the player it's a little bit of the golf course but you can't boil it down to just the golf ball you really can't I think a lot of the conditioning, I'm I'm serious. I mean, I just, it, the difference between these young players today and the conditioning they do than what we did is it's amazing. It is. that That's the agronomy aspect to it. And um, the, 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 the mowing equipment is so much different now than it was when you were playing the game. Are you kidding? That's why when we played, the putter was a seven degrees loft because we had to get there the ball go. up and running. Yep. Today it's a three. You like putting on a pool table compared to what we put it on. This is this airport. It's it. And now they allow you to pat down the spike marks. We couldn't do that before. I think one of the biggest um, things that changed when it came to equipment as far as the driver was the Big Bertha. Right? In 1991, that was that was kind of a big thing where you see, they Big went Bertha from... changed my life, too. <laughs> <laughs> she was big, but she was a hell of a good time. Anyway, here but we go. that was the first kind of introduction of a of an oversized driver, right? Hey, Darren. Yes. Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Hey, can I jump in with a go question? For it. Absolutely. Or two? What did you did so, you have the big mama? <laughs> no. Oh. But these, you know, all this mumbo jumbo with the charts, just fine. That'll all work itself out. My question number one is. You guys are in the know. Did this distance thing just come out of the clear blue sky this week? No. Or did you hear about it months ago? Or oh, we heard about it back when we were at the Sawgrass. Yeah. No. This is this is not. Well, it, it was in the making, and once again, it, it comes back to Dean Beeman was talking about it. He you? was, but this this boils down to one thing and one thing only: the USGA and Mike Davis. This is all about an evil right. trip of one person trying to leave his mark on the golf industry. And he's not going to rest until it happens. And I'm sorry. Right. That's just my opinion on it. I mean, for the last 120 years, we've improved equipment. We've improved the balls to, to hit it further. And now all of a sudden they said, stop. So, so here, here's the way I look at it. And, and, it's the same thing with college baseball, and, and I've had an opportunity to work with some college baseball coaches, and I've played a lot of golf with some professional baseball players. The difference between a, a wooden bat and an aluminum bat. Yep. And you don't see that anything changing there, right, because there's no ego involved there. It's a lot more dangerous for that aluminum bat if you're playing – in in the field, that ball's so coming at you a lot the girls, faster. Especially the girls, but they're only 45 feet Ex away. Exactly, but you don't see that change. Pitcher, you know, it's 45 feet. You don't. It's more right. to be uh, an ego thing than, than anything. And it's based on that 1%, as you and I have talked about many times, Charlie. It's the yeah. 1%. It's not yeah. about the, the Charlie Joneses of the world. It's not. And that's where we need to focus our attention on. It's the Charlie Joneses of the world that – are are paying the bills yeah, really we want, we want to help the guy to without the charlie ball. jones we're not seeing people on tv exactly we well who to gets to vote who gets to vote on this whoever well there there is only one vote question. there's only one vote and at the end of mike the day, davis that's mike davis there's only one vote mike davis. can he actually push the whole thing through on his own he will that's the bottom line he will. Well, you see, you know, I don't mind if they want to restrict the ball. He doesn't the, have a boss. Who's Mike Davis's boss? 
He does not have a boss. Isn't there a committee nobody, at the USDA? There's, there's nobody governing him. What about the Royal and Ancient about. In, 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 in England, the Royal and Ancient? They have to agree to it, don't the, they? They do. You're absolutely right. They're a different, they're a different entity there. Look, they've got Brexit to go through. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I can see if they want to if they want to try and restrict the touring pros, okay. But so, by, the regular by guy, the that, guy, that, the guy who's hitting his driver 190 yards, we want to try and get him to hit it 220. I mean, we don't want him to hit it 180. So why not have a bifurcation like they do in baseball, a, a, a metal bat versus a wooden bat? Why not? I'm game for that. I think it's a, that's a good way to do it because we're talking about that little tiny percent here. But you know, another thing. It, and, and I know you have the statistics to prove me wrong, but length isn't everything. And you got to get the ball in the hole. You got to putt. You gotta Bobby. Throw shots. You got Bobby. You know. <laughs> My wife disagrees. <laughs> <laughs> I know she told me the same thing Friday night. <laughs> no, you know what I'm saying. In other words, you, there's other there's other skill sets to the game, and yes. Proximity to the hole, as they say, you know, if you want to get a nine iron in and I'm hitting a six iron, you're going to kick my tail, and you're probably right. But still, you know, why restrict the guys from hitting the ball far? Um, tighten up the fairway. If it were me, I would do it not by by the equipment of the ball. I would do it with the grass. I would. would you go to the point. You go to the Masters, and what's the hole that bust their chops at par three? Yep. It's a nine iron shot. Yep. Right, and they're making hey, Darren. double bogeys. Darren, another question: If they decide to restrict the distance by the ball, I mean, what are they going to have to do? The ball manufacturers, Titleist, Callaway. Well, are they going to have to redesign, change right, so, the spin, so change um, the cover, change the core? Right. So that's a big part of what they're doing that's right it. now. They're they're in in. We ought to call Dean Snell and find out what. That's true. We should talk to Dean Snell, but they are in the process of talking with all the major manufacturers. I know that that's going on. It's one of the the summaries of of this report, and they are talking to the the the, the companies that you know would be affected by a change of the golf ball. But stop the Pro V1X, right? You got to stop it now. Well, but but once again, in, in summary of this report, they don't want to have two different type of golf balls. They 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 really they don't want to do that. So I mean, that's going to be a big factor in there because you know what what ball do you play? The the ball you play is what you see the the elite players playing on TV. You know what I mean? So yeah. It's a big, it's a big factor in there, which they're, I guess, hopefully the the big equipment manufacturers will put up, um, put up and stop about it. Like I said today in our workshop, I said um, to stock up on your Pro V ones, right? Because you don't know what's going to happen going forward, and hopefully it doesn't get to that point. But they are talking with all the big equipment makers and and. But Charlie's playing with a ladies' ball. He he, yeah, he to, does. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yeah, yeah. It was pink. <laughs> no, really. Listen, think about the dynamics. They would have to change their whole assembly line and <laughs> yeah. how they make everything. Titleist. I just took my certification in, in in the Titleist golf ball. They have three plants that they're manufacturing golf balls from up in Massachusetts. That's a big operation three plant yeah. that will be affected. They don't have one. Don't have to change the whole <laughs> line. No, American made. Right, exactly. American made with Titleist. So but yeah, that's a big deal. And think about all those people in Massachusetts. Their jobs will be affected by it. So Yeah. This is one man's ego in my opinion. I don't even know if we should record this and put it online tonight because I've got such a strong opinion on it. But no, it's, you got it's one man's idea. ego. Exactly, it's one man's ego against. I don't think you're the only person that thinks that. You know, there might be a lot of people that are too chicken to say it. Hank Haney agrees. That's right. Hank is one of my guys. Absolutely. Yeah, well, Hank Haney's not chicken and, to and, say anything. Look what happened to him. And I didn't see much of Breed's show or listen to it this morning, but I'm sure he had some really good opinions about bringing the ball back. It's it's not it's not something we want to do. We don't want to make this game. Harder. He doesn't want to either. Yes, I listen to it. Don't want to yeah. make this game harder. And they're say, the USGA is saying right now, 
the game is too easy. And it's not. They're it's full a of difficult crap, game. They're full of crap. One of the reasons you'd lose people in this in this in this golf is because people get frustrated and they exactly. quit. Exactly. Because and, it's not that easy. And and our conversations with Dean Beeman and, and how beginners learn the game, that's why they quit, because it's too hard. It's not because it's easy. Give me a break. So you can you can take the long ball out of the pros' hands by just changing the configuration of the golf course. You make it yes. really tight at these 320 to 350 areas off the tee to where if they miss that fairway, they're going to pay a serious consequence. I, I don't know if I agree with the distance where you limit it. Just limit the width of the fairways the entire length of the hole because yeah, it's 20, not fair to the shorter yards player. Wide. It, but limiting the width of the hole, absolutely. That would definitely change it, it your make opinion. The rough really but rough. the rough makes it rough be, thicker. The rough has to be thicker. It has Bring to the be out of bounds lines in closer to white stakes. Here's what I would call the rough if it were me. I say the rough is a one stroke penalty that's recoverable. Well, one stroke. It's a uh, one stroke half a penalty stroke, that's a half a stroke. Yeah, right? so, which comes down to about a half a stroke. So, in other words, you, you, there's no penalty, but I'm just saying that you'd have to just bump the ball out and go. So I'm, I'm I'm very friendly with Reese Jones. And one of the things Reese talked about a lot to me about some of the bunkers that he he put into play at the bridge is that a bunker mm -hmm. should be a half a stroke penalty. And I think the same applies for the rough. There you go. It shouldn't I, be a stroke. Although, you know, if you think it's a stroke, that's no, your opinion. No, no, no. Let me say it differently, because what I'm really agreeing with, I'm saying it should appear like a one stroke penalty gotcha. that's recoverable. Right. Could be no penalty at all. You could bump it back out in the fairway, leave yourself a 90-yard shot, knock it up on the green eight feet, and, 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 and you know, and, and sink it for a par. You made a par anyway, but you 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 had a hard time reaching the green out of right. the rough. I agree. Because the problem is the rough is so thin right now that they get out of wedge and they knock the snot out of it. And these kids are it's so bomb strong. and gouge, bomb and gouge every day. That's you what know. we see. But hey, Darren, they could also make the uh, water hazard a stroke in distance. Instead of just a one stroke penalty. <laughs> you no, know, you're you're right there, Charlie, that you could definitely do that. Um <laughs> as opposed to changing the whole ball thing. There's there's lots of other options here. And 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 that's why I thought this topic tonight would be a great conversation piece because everybody's got a different opinion on it all. In fact, let's do that. Let's open up some of the microphones. Does anybody want to make chime in on this here? About George, George, you got any comments on this? Sippy, what do you you sleep? Wake up, Sippy. Sippy, wake up. I guess Sippy, not. Larry, Covey. Oh, no. There you go. There you yeah. go. Anybody else got to want to throw a comment in? What's some of the other things that you printed out here? Um, forgiveness of golf clubs. That's that. You know, we talked a little bit about that. Oh, oh here, here was a chart you wanted to go over. Here's a chart that was important, right here. Oh, here we go. Look at this. Yeah, there we go. Go ahead, explain that. So forgiveness of golf clubs, and and that's that's night and day over the years. And and you can still, it's it's what call it's what's called um. Moment of inertia. So the farther you miss the the sweet spot, right? If you hit it towards the toe, you the hit it towards the, on the, the club will twist on you. And today's modern equipment, that that MOI, as they call it, is a lot less. So you get more energy transfer out of a miss hit, right? In addition, another technical term, that coefficient of restitution, the COR, the which is basically the spring. <laughs> Bobby's rolling his eyes. Right. right here, hold on, I'll, I'll clean it off again. Where, 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 where's the? Uh... Oh, anyway, this is the center of the face. This is yep. center of gravity. This is out towards the toe, and you see, out towards the toe, you don't lose that much difference. Out towards the heel, it tanks. It tanks a lot. Yep. See? But this is also on the heel. Th this yeah. <laughs> this chart also shows you the difference right. between the modern day yeah. golf club I'll and draw you a picture of Darren. <laughs> <laughs> There's Darren practicing on the range. <laughs> Give me a little hair, will you? Yeah, I mean, At least a smile on my face, something along the lines. There you go. 
Martin Luther, he's got a question right there. Hold on. Let me let me, let me clean this off of here somehow. What do you how do you how do you, how do you erase it? Oh, here we go. Eraser, eraser. Where's the eraser? Oh crap. Well, anyway, let's see what this question what is. We got right here. Down here. Chat box. Scroll up. We got a good question here. Here we go. Mike Davis and Nicholas have been collaborating. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Who said that? Hold time out. It's a mission. <laughs> it's a shame. Oh, there's Timo Tim. Tim. Tomato. Tim. Tomato. Tim. Tomato. Uh, well, yeah, it's been definitely Jack Nicholas's call, call big Jack thing Nicholas. for sure. He, he, he for was sure. with that Cayman ball at one time, remember? I don't remember that. You don't remember the Cayman ball? I know Jack wants the ball was, rolled back. We called the Cayman ball because the Grand Cayman to do the short golf course. And, and I, my, when I met Mike Davis, I played with him as Jack's guest at the Bears Club. He was coming out for one of the first years when right. the Bears Club was open, and that's when I met Jack. And um, to be honest. You know, when we were on the 18th hole, I probably played for, I, I want to say, let's say I played 50 groups for Nicholas's guests. Right. And of those 50 people that I played golf with, Jack only met one person on the 18th green. And who do you think that was? Mike Davis. You got it. One person. Okay, so let's look at this question here from Martin Lothar. For the pros, they can just make the fairways narrower and make the rough thicker. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. I think something similar may have happened to the... You got it. Yeah, Mar he, you're, in, you're absolutely right. In Paris at the, the Ryder Cup. Cup. Yep. That's oh, exactly we, we, make you, we, make the, we make the fairway very skinny for you. I hit the policy bunker. Oh, dear. All right. Okay, any other questions? Anybody anybody else going to make a comment? Or does the microphone work or they can type one in? We're happy to try and answer your question. Who knows? I, I want to bring up, Roy can, you, can you pull up page 38? Pull up 38. Page 38. Yep. Whatever you say is what I'm going to do. It's 34, 35. Oh, magic wizard, page 38. 38. Now, there how do go. I clean this crap off of here? Hold on a sec. Try that. That. No, no, that, that, that button. Yeah, erase all the Erase all the There, there you, you go. Boy, look at that. You're a genius. I am. You're a freaking genius. So scroll up a little more. All right. Top of the go. page. No, no, no. Top of the page. Top of the page. You haven't gotten there yet. All right. There we go. Right here. So right here it says, according to a white paper by Trackman. <laughs> now, why do they have to uh, <laughs> discriminate between white, pe white papers and other papers? Well, go ahead. But it says it no, says that's a certain thing a white paper. Well, no, I know that's it was a joke. Okay, you, you didn't ahead. get that. One. I don't get. Don't have white papers in Cuba. Okay, no, <laughs> but it says here a, a popular launch monitor brand. I mean, to me, TrackMan's one of the. It's the foremost out it, there it's, of. It's, it's it. That's right. It. Yeah. And 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 that says a lot to me about this kind of report and and how they're looking at certain things. So you know, TrackMan to me needs to be like at least at this point of the game the Bible. It shouldn't be a popular launch monitor brand. It should say, by TrackMan, the Bible when it comes to launch monitors, and they don't. You know, so there's a lot of things that really just rub me the wrong way with this report, but it's just my opinion on it. And and once again, I haven't read it in depth thoroughly yet. So what did I hear? Whole length and range, average whole length, 274, average. Bobby, go back up. It's talking about us amateur golfers. According to the white paper by TrackMan, an average male amateur golfer has significantly lower ball speed, higher spin, and lower launch angle than optimum for distance given their club head speed. So what does that say? There you go. There you go. Right there? In, in addition to physical disabilities. No. <laughs> but the, this, this statement right here talks about exactly what we're talking about. They're yes. Not, they're not. They're not. They're not figuring in this person, the average person, the average well, male golfer. Well, That's who pays the bills. You know, it's not the elite golfer. It's we, not the one percent. We, we, we talked about that earlier before we went on the air here, because I told you I said, you know what the hell with the golf pros? It's the exactly. guy that buys a basket of balls and a driver. That's all I care about. And wants to play golf, and wants to play better. Have fun. And have fun, exactly. And because, it's not just the guy. Because, because if that have, didn't happen, we have tons of women too. Nobody wants lessons and tiddlywinks. Nope. So, you know, they want lessons in golf because 
they want to play better and they like the game. They want, you, you, know. you watch a tennis match, right? right. You, you don't want to see ink dink You don't want to see you and I just popping it over the net. You want to see power. You want to see speed. Right. And and that's the bottom line. And 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 that might be one of the problems that tennis has because how does the, how do you you know invert that over to the regular guy that plays a regular game of tennis? You know. So anyway, what's what's this chart? And I could be totally wrong about that because I know nothing about <laughs> tennis. <laughs> but anyway, that's that's kind of my rant for. For what we so here they're saying seen. that on the average hole that's 225 to 274, they're using a driver 14% of the time. Average distance, driving distance 268. What are you kidding me? Well, what they're Bobby. talking about here is the longer the hole is, the more apt you're to use. You tell me the average guy's hitting his tee shot 268. I don't no, 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 no. That's not what they're saying here. They're talking about the 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 longer the hole is, the more apt you use driver, right? And and I don't know where they're going with this because I haven't read much into it, but I just wanted to bring up that that fact about the average golfer and track man. And but go ahead, Charlie. You had something to say? Yeah, scroll back up. You didn't read the next paragraph. It's what better than the chart. <laughs> just the most direct and measurable manifestation of such strategic choices is club selection. Yep, off there the you team. go. Yep. See, yeah, that's more. I don't. You know, the charts are what they are. But, but when it comes to club selection off the tee, the average golfer just wants to, to get it in play. So they're they're more apt to hit a hybrid or a fairway wood or an iron if they're struggling with their driver for distance. Right. And and, and just once again, so if you're struggling for distance or struggling for, for accuracy there, why would you want to roll the ball back? You wouldn't. Well, Larry says here, how does that affect the senior golfer with a 13 handicap index? It affects you ginormously. Now, it might be that the, if, if, if you look at something like this Callaway Super Soft, but I notice when I hit it with an iron, it goes further. If I hit it with a driver, it doesn't go further. If anything, it goes less. It might be that the new ball they come out with, for the average guy that's a senior golfer that doesn't have that much club head speed, the ball might still go the same that it used to. Well, that's one of the kind of insider things that I've heard. I don't know if it's true or not. I'm just talking, speculating about rumors of the ball they call the equalizer. So at a certain club head speed, the ball will not go one penny farther. So you can hit, you can swing at 90 miles an hour and 130 miles an hour, and the ball will still go the same distance. It's what they call the equalizer. It's un American it's because there's no advancement. <laughs> That's you why want we're to get this better. That's right. You know, you want you want to always, you know, you want to get better and better and better and better and better. But as far as Larry's, it, it, you know, Larry, I would be concerned if I were you, because what that's going to do is it's going to increase your par three yardage, and your par three yardage is a really big number. Here's what par three yardage is: it's your distance on the par threes to the hole, it's your distance to the hole on your second shot on a par four. And it's your distance to the hole on your third shot on a par five. And it's going to make those distances longer. And what that means is the longer your par three yardage is, is the, the higher your score is going to be. So it's going to affect you greatly. And I would have great concern if I were you as a senior 13 handicap. Okay. Sorry to break the news to you. I know. It's, it's, this is doom and gloom tonight. It's terrible. Doom and gloom. Well, I think it's a rotten idea. It is a rotten idea. What's this thing right here? Who the hell knows? It look, you know what it looks like? It's an alien spaceship. Unless you came up with a spaceship. <laughs> Bobby, that looks like the raft you came over That's from right. in Cuba. <laughs> so let, let's just kind of let's kind of wrap it up and boil it down to a couple of different things, you yeah. know. The, the the reasons why we've got increases in distance over the years are are kind of at least to me fourfold, um, or you can break it down into threes. The equipment, meaning to me the golf club, which I would consider separate, and the golf ball, which would be separate. So that would be two: the golfer and then the golf course. Those are to, to me the four different reasons, and you can't just grab one or the other. And roll the ball back, or roll the golf club back, or change the golf course. It's got to be 
uh, factored into the decision making process. And at the end of the day, it's all about the average golfer, the person who's who's teeing it up on Saturday mornings at 930 and they're the ones paying the bill. And what what I surmise from this report so far is all about the the one percent and and the better player and the people you see on TV. And to me, there needs to be that bifurcation of golf balls, just like they have in Major League Baseball and College Baseball, a different bat. And I'm sure the same goes for a lot of different sports that I'm just not bringing up, like basketball and and tennis and whatever other sport. But um, to me, that's that's kind of what it boils down to. And this is concerning to me right here. I'm looking at this chart. It says the European Tour courses. Well, it said here from 1970 to 2019. Here it is, 1980, right? I'm not even on the chart. I signed <laughs> in 1976. Yeah, you're off the chart. <laughs> I'm not even on Which the means chart. a lot. That, that explains I'm, a lot. I might be a thousand years old now. Look at this. Unbelievable. I'm not even on, a, on, on the chart. 1976. Well, it's close. But four years. You know, we we're we're concerned about you and and your golf games. And um, we want you to get better at golf. So please exactly. send us send us send us some videos of what you're doing with your golf swing. It's uh, not a penny out of your pocket. Why wouldn't you send it quick service at quickfixgolf.com, and we'll send you back an analysis with a with a drill just for you. And don't worry about the golf ball because if for whatever reason USGA restricts the golf ball, my cousin Quantito <laughs> will be bringing balls in from Guatemala right over the fence. Beck will even sell some to, to Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to want them. <laughs> and they'll go 30 yards further. That's right. Yes. <laughs> it will be a tight as a tit yeah, that's right. tit tit list. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Any other questions? And that we'll call it a night. All good. Thank you, guys. All right, gang.